What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp plugin tutorial for you. So this week we're going to use an extension called Fredo Scale to create a twisted steel door pole. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So basically what we're going to do is we're, we're going to create a twisted steel door pole. And so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use two options that are included in Fredo Scale. And by the way, you can download Fredo Scale from the Sketchication plugin warehouse. So uh, first thing we're going to do is we're just going to draw a rectangle and we're just going to make it two inches by two inches. So just type in two comma two once you've activated that tool and then we'll just kind of zoom in on it like this. And then what you're going to do is you're going to push pull that for four inches just like this. So you've got kind of this little rectangle right here. So then what you're going to do is you're going to select your box like this, go up to Fredo scale and you're going to want to select this little box with the uh, blue triangles on it. Uh, this is the uh, twist option. So click on that and you can see how that's going to give you these three different options right here. So it's going to give you these three grips. So you want to click on this top grip. So you want to move your mouse off to the side. Uh, so it's basically lined up with this green axis over here. And uh, then you're just going to click once. You're going to type in 90 and hit the enter key. You can see what that does is that twists your box. So if you were to come in here and do this with the uh, regular method, which would be to come in here and use the rotate tool to rotate this top face, you can see how this is just going to kind of deform everything. But this, um, the twist option actually makes this so this creates kind of a smooth curve along here. So it's a really cool option. Um, so come in here once you've done that just select it and make it a group and then you're just going to make a copy of it like this using the move tool and then type in times let's say four for right now we can always come in and remove stuff later so basically what you're gonna do now is you're gonna come in here and you're gonna select these top two objects and you're gonna select another option in Fredo scale um, it's gonna be the radial bend so and I've done a couple videos about the radial bend I really love this uh, part of the tool so but select these top two twisting pieces then come in here and select this radial bend option and move your mouse until you get over the midpoint of this face right here and then you can use the inference locking with your keyboard so just uh, tap the left mouse key and that'll lock your um, your protractor to the green axis then you're gonna click once on this midpoint right here and then it, you're gonna have to click three times you're gonna click the first time to just set your reference direction so you want that to be straight up or down so click once here your target point is going to be where the end of your bend happens so you're basically telling it I want you to bend between this original point and this end point right here if you click here so click on that and then it's going to ask you to pick your rotation angle then you can just you move your mouse so this is at 90 degrees just like this and then click again you can see what that did is that came in here and this subdivided this a little bit um, you can see how it's got a couple extra lines in here but it basically bent this along the curve that you told it to bend so now you've actually got this cool bent twisting object just like this so next thing you're going to do is just use that move tool in copy mode to create a copy of this so just select everything and you can probably make this as a you can probably make this a component actually we'll just call this top half and then you're going to activate the move tool click once and hit the control key and then click again to create a copy then you can use the regular scale tool to just flip this in place or you can mirror it across the axis whatever you prefer and then just move this piece back just like this and you can see how there's a problem here in that I flipped this once but now the spin doesn't continue because when I mirrored it up and down it flipped this so just come in here and just flip this in place again and again you can use the mirror across axis option by right clicking as well so you can see how what you've gotten here is you've got this cool spinning wire pull well now all you need to do is come in here in your object and just uh, you basically need to come in here and draw your little metal pieces that are going to actually fasten this to your door so and you can just kind of draw this however you want it however you want it to look so then I'll come in here I'll heal this face so now I've got kind of a basic canvas of what I want this to look like now I can just come in here and just make some little changes to kind of make this the way that I want it to look 
So, and you can see how I'm doing a lot of copying with the move tool and flipping things. Um, that's just so once I've drawn something, I don't have to come back in here and recreate it as much as I just have to come in here and just flip it over to make sure everything's kind of the same size. But you can go ahead and um, fill this in like this. You can push pull it a little bit to give it a little bit of depth. So just something like that. And you can see how since this is a component, it'll also show up in this other piece right here. So now all we need to do is we just need to put this on a door. And actually I have a feeling what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm actually gonna pull one of these pieces out because I really kind of felt like uh, this was just a little bit too big. So you can see how I just move that piece out and then just move this down so that it kind of locked to itself. So now I like the way this looks a little bit better. So now all we need to do is bring in a door. So I'm gonna go to the 3D warehouse. I'm gonna click get models and I'm just gonna type in entry door and I've already got one selected actually in here so it's gonna be the entry door by this one's by toolman Tom um, I'm just gonna download that into my model just like this I'll just place it on this axis right here I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna delete this piece it's like this so now I'm gonna put these two pieces in a group and I'm gonna use the move tool and I'm so select your object, activate the move tool, and there will be these little red crosses that you can click on to rotate this, just like this. And so you're just going to turn this to 90 degrees. And then you're going to have to move this piece across. And you can see how this is way too big, the way that we modeled it. Like it's, it's way too big of a piece of uh, geometry. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use uniform scale. And we're just going to scale it down just like this until you kind of like the size of it. So now that I've scaled it down and it's on this face, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to inference it to the midpoint of this object right here. So now it's centered on that lock. Then I'm going to come in here with the uh, material tool. I'm going to use the eyedropper to select this material right here. And I'm going to click on this to paint it. So now I've got this cool twisted steel door pull on this door that I pulled down from the 3D warehouse. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Is this something uh, you've got some cool ideas on how to use? Uh, what do you think about this extension? Uh, I just love having that sketch up conversation with you guys. So please remember to leave that comment. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new sketch up content every week. Now, if you really like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month to help help me keep bringing you great SketchUp content. But in any case, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.